In the next few sessions, we're going to talk about script organization. The importance of this can't be stressed enough. One of the big things with script organization is you can improve your compute and render efficiency. You can also improve the workflow and the scalability of your comps. It'll lower the threshold for making changes and reworking. It also has easier portability. So if you're working with multiple artists, you're working with multiple vendors or shops, it makes moving things around a little bit easier and it makes it easier to read the scripts as well as break them into small pieces. So let's talk about why this is important. This is a script that I was party to many years ago. And let me just show you the scale of this. This took days and days to render every time there was a change. It was also an extremely long image sequence. You know, I think we were rendering something like 1,000 or 1,200 frames. I think we started somewhere here in the middle, and then it spiders out. And as you can see, there are lots of things going on here. This is why organization is really, really important. You know, We had multiple artists working on this, but this was primarily one artist doing all of this work. If it had been organized a little cleaner, we might have been able to divide it up. We also might have been able to optimize some of the rendering and reduce the total amount of time. But I just wanted to show you this script because this is a really good example of how big a composite might become for a long shot or a shot with a lot of different assets. You know, and every asset might need work in and of itself. And then finally our right node here. So let's talk about the major tenets of script organization. You know, the, the first thing for me is being explicit, working pre-multiplied, working additively, and working over. Second to that is form should follow function. So when you're working in a script, the shape of the script should indicate what's going on in it. So let's talk about each of these individually. So when I say work explicit, I mean show the work. This is like when you're in math class and the teacher wants to see how you got to your solution. Same thing here. So there are a lot of different ways to do things in Nuke, you know, especially being node based, you can, there's six, seven, eight, ten different ways to do one specific thing sometimes. Uh, working explicitly shows what you're doing and it makes it easier for you when you go back to make a modification or for someone else that's maybe picking up the script from scratch. So in this case, working explicitly means to use the form of Nuke to show what's going on. So a quick example of this is a roto shape. So we're creating just a red square here. There's actually a couple ways to do that. There's more ways to do that actually, but this is a roto tool and a roto tool does lots of different things. So sometimes there's maybe a better way to show that so that you don't have to open this roto node or view this roto node to see, oh, it's a shape, its color is red, so in this case, we use a constant and then a masking operation and a roto node again. Same roto node, we're just using it in a different way. So from afar, you know, zoomed all the way out here, I can tell that this is doing something very specific where this, I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. You know, similarly here. So say we need to add a solid alpha channel to our read node. We can do that via the auto alpha box here, but we can also do it with a shuffle node. And again, from afar, I don't, I don't see that that's necessarily been done to this read node. And so if I was to change this read node or we were to re-render and maybe somebody didn't tick the alpha box on the render, I can actually see that that's done here without having to worry about a modification inside the property panel. Another thing, there are some tools where you really can't show the work via the node graph, but Nuke gives you other avenues to show that. You know, the first up is a sticky node, as well as a backdrop node. So as you can see, I use backdrop nodes all the time, both for this tutorial and in my work daily. You know, backdrop node lets you group things together really cleanly. You can drag and drag and open it up or make it smaller. I use it for notation and I use it to sort of clump nodes together into manageable groups. Sticky node kind of does the same thing. It just doesn't affect nodes if they're nodes on top of it. The next thing you can do is Nuke has some built-in organizational tools. So every tool has a name option. Now these have to be unique based on the way Nuke is built. 
but you can name them very specific things. So in this case, you know, if we're color correcting a face, we can name this face CC. You know, same with our transform tool. We can name it face match move, or we can name it face stabilize. That gives us, you know, a very clear indication of what that is once we zoom in on it. Another thing you can do is you can actually use labels. So every tool has a label for the most part. So you have your main tab here in your property panel. If you go over to the node tab, you'll see that you actually have a label visible here. And you can modify this, you can add extra lines. These are really handy if you have a lot of different tools that are very similar and you want to differentiate them both for yourself or for other artists. You can use stickies the same way too. You know, I very often use stickies just stuck out next to a node or set of nodes, either indicating that there's something different here or there's a change or that this is the node that I'm looking for later when I know I'm going to need to find it again. So those are a couple ways you can help organize your script that way. Another really useful thing is to actually use the dots. So a dot can be created by hitting the period key and you can inject dots into your pipes. These are really, really handy for both organizing, you know, building nice clean flows where you don't have pipes crisscrossing each other. They have a label as well. So you can go in here and change the label and make that whatever whatever you want it to be so that can notate what the fork of that script is, you know, or what what chunk of nodes you're working on right there via labeling with that dot. So you can label that chunk of nodes using the dot as your label instead of using one of the other options. So that's what explicit means. It's basically just being as clean as you can and showing your work wherever you can.